Hello, I'm Dr. David Hornbrook, and today I want to talk about the factors that influence the final shade of the restoration. Here we have Robin. She's been in provisionals for the last two weeks, and we're going to go ahead and bond in 10 Empress veneers. Now, there's three primary factors. One is the ceramic itself, the thickness as well as the opacity or the translucency, huge factor. The second is the cement, but to a much lesser degree. The cement can change value. If we try in a restoration that's translucent, try it in with water, we like the shade, we can use a clear cement. If we try it in with water and we wish it was a little bit brighter, we can use a higher value cement, which will brighten that up. If we try it in as too monochromatic, then we can use a warmer cement. Again, that's a lesser degree, primarily because these restorations fit so well. The third factor and a huge influence is the shade of the preparation. So anytime that you utilize Empress, Emacs, or any of the new high translucency zirconium, like the Bruxer Aesthetic, we need from you at the dental laboratory a preparation shade. It used to be called the stump shade. Now we call it the natural dye or the preparation shade. Iva Klar has made a shade guide that's called the natural dye material. And it's available in shades one through nine, higher value in one, obviously darker or lower value at the nine. Now the way the laboratory utilizes this, so before I put on my provisionals, I go ahead and take my shade. Laboratories prefer that we photograph that because these may not match exactly. It might be slightly off and what the laboratory wants is to see what value your preparation is. So they can, fix, they can pick a preparation shade that's as close as possible in value. So how do they use this? Well, the prep dye material is actually a light cured flexible resin. And the syringes in different shades, this is ND1, you can see it's kind of sticky. We'd light cure that and put it into the restoration to do our final shade. So the laboratory, and here I'll just give an example. Here's an Emax veneer. It could be a crown, it could be a veneer. The laboratory goes ahead and takes that natural dye material. They put it into the restoration. They then take one of these little metal sticks. Some laboratories use plastic sticks, but it's just a little metal, like a Pindex pin. And they stick it in to the natural dye material before they light cure it. And then what they'll do is they'll go ahead and wet the inside of this or the outer, either the inside of the restoration or the dye itself. They'll stick it into the restoration and then they'll determine is this the right shade or do they need to custom stain it. Sometimes it even gets to the point where they realize that they use the wrong translucent or opaque material and they actually have to start over. So the way we use it clinically, we gave them the prep shade, we gave them the final shade, and then we get the restoration back. Part of the deal, in my opinion, when you utilize either Emacs, Empress, or even the Bruxer Aesthetics, is to make sure the lab returns the prep dyes. And so before I take off Robin's temporaries, I can go ahead and wet the inside of this. I can put it on the corresponding dye. I can then take the shade that I had ordered and see if it matches. If it's slightly off, then I have to make the evaluation. Is this something that I can change utilizing the cement? Either warming it up or brightening it up. I hope that certainly ended in confusion you may have about how we utilize these prep shades. One of the most common phone calls I make to dentists is asking them for their prep shade because we need to know if we're gonna use a translucent material.